The Bible is God speaking to me. I am what the Word of God says I am. I can do what the Word of God says I can do. I have what the Word of God says I possess. I am a believer, not a doubter. My mind is renewed with the Word. Therefore, I'm thinking those thoughts that please my Father. I'm walking by faith and not by sight. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. I'd like for you to turn in your Bibles, please, to the book of Acts. Acts, the 19th chapter, teaching on the subject of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is the helper we all need. The Holy Spirit is the teacher. The Holy Spirit is the spirit of truth. The Holy Spirit is our comforter. So let us look at Acts, the 19th chapter. Paul the Apostle, as he was traveling and passing through the upper coasts of Ephesus, he saw people that were believers in Christ Jesus. They were disciples. They were born again. They were individuals that had already encountered what it means to be a new creation person in the Lord. They were people who were truly, truly identified as Christians. However, the Apostle Paul recognized that there was something missing in their life. That meant that, yes, even though they had a sincere desire to not learn more of Jesus, even though they identified themselves as Christians, Paul the Apostle recognized there was something missing in their walk. Not that they were speaking evil of them, but he was aware that there was a lack of power in their testimony for Christ. So Paul the Apostle has in Acts chapter 19, verse 1, we have a record given unto us by the Holy Spirit so that people could see. Yes, you're a believer in Christ Jesus if you believe on the Lord. But do you have a power missing in your life? Is your testimony for Christ as full as it can be? Is your revelation in the Lord that which you consider all that it should be? Are you testifying and identifying yourself in Christ at the level of boldness that you'd like to? Let's look here at Acts chapter 19, verse 1. In Acts, the 19th chapter, verse 1, And it came to pass that while Apollos was at Corinth, Paul passed through the upper coast, came to Ephesus. And finding certain disciples, he said unto them, have you received the Holy Ghost since you believed? Now notice here, they were already believers. He said, have you received the Holy Ghost since you believed? With an E-D, which means they were already believers on Jesus Christ. But he recognized that there was a missing power in their life. He identified this power as the absence of the infilling of the Holy Spirit. Now we know they're born again. We know they're called believers. We know they're disciples. However, they don't have the infilling of the Holy Spirit with the evidence of speaking with other tongues and power in their understanding of the Lord. So Paul asked them the question, and notice, they didn't mention anything to Paul about the infilling of the Holy Spirit. Paul mentioned something to them. It is because he recognized they needed to be filled with the Holy Ghost. Now, Acts chapter 19, verse 2. He said unto them, Have you received the Holy Ghost since you believed? And they said unto him, We have not so much as heard whether there be any Holy Ghost. And he said unto them, Unto what then were you baptized? They said unto John's baptism. Then said Paul, John verily baptized with the baptism of repentance, saying unto the people that they should believe on him which should come after him, that is, on Christ Jesus. When they heard this, 
they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. And when Paul had laid his hands upon them, the Holy Ghost came on them, and they spake with tongues and prophesied. I'd like for you to underline or highlight the term in verse 6. It says, and they spake with tongues and prophesied. Now, the speaking with other tongues is clearly acknowledged here because the Holy Spirit wants us to see by the written word of God that when they got filled with the Holy Spirit, there was an outward expression of something that had happened on the inside of them. And that is, they began to speak with other tongues because they were now full of the Holy Ghost. Another way of describing it is now they were baptized with the Holy Ghost with the evidence of speaking with other tongues. And then it identifies that verse 6 and 7 of Acts chapter 19 here. It says, And when Paul had laid his hands upon them, the Holy Ghost came on them, and they spake with tongues and prophesied, and all the men were about twelve. Notice, and all the men were about twelve. Which meant, the word all means none were left out. Some people have said, well, it's for some believers in Christ Jesus to be filled with the Holy Spirit. Not for all believers. Well, according to the scriptures here, they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues. Let's look at Acts as we read last week. Acts now chapter 1. In Acts chapter 1, we're going to go back over this verse of scripture in Acts chapter 1 verse 8 where Jesus is speaking and we'll notice that Jesus wanted all believers to be filled with the Holy Spirit. All of his disciples. Some people have said, well, it's just for ministry offices, apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers to be filled with the Holy Ghost with speaking with other tongues. Not so. Here it lets us know that all believers who believe on the Lord Jesus Christ should be filled with the Holy Spirit and have the evidence of speaking with other tongues. Acts chapter 1, verse 8. In Acts chapter 1, verse 8, the scripture says, but you shall receive power. After that, the Holy Ghost is come upon you. And you shall be witnesses unto me both in Jerusalem and in all Judea and in Samaria and unto the uttermost part of the earth. Now, here Jesus is acknowledging to his disciples that they should be filled with the Holy Spirit with the evidence of speaking with other tongues because it's also described as the baptism with the Holy Ghost. If you read in Acts chapter 1, which we've seen in the past, we'll look at chapter 1 of Acts, verses 4 and 5, and then 6, 7, and 8. Acts chapter 1, verse 4. And being assembled together with them, commanded them that they should not depart from Jerusalem, but wait for the promise of the Father, which saith he, you have heard of me. For John truly baptized with water, but you shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost not many days hence. That means not many days from now. What well, Jesus is talking to people who are believers. They're born again. What are the requirements to be called a believer or born again? You must believe in your heart that God raised Jesus from the dead, and you must confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord. Well, they had to believe that God raised Jesus from the dead because in Acts chapter 1, he's talking to them after they've observed his crucifixion, his death, burial, and now his resurrection. So they must believe he's alive from the dead, and they're talking to him and they're calling him Lord. Therefore, they would be identified as people, according to Romans 10, 9 and 10, as people who believe on Jesus and are born again. Let's look at verse 5 again of Acts chapter 1. For John truly baptized with water, but you shall, you shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost not many days hence. When they therefore were come together, they asked of him, saying, Lord, wilt thou at this time restore again the kingdom to Israel? 
And he said unto them, It is not for you to know the times or the seasons which the Father hath put in his own power. But, now the word but means he's attaching an answer to their question. He's letting them know you're going to receive an answer to your question. I just want to identify to you that what you're asking for about restoring Israel to its position of being a world leader, that's not going to, t to be something that he's going to speak to them about right now. What he's going to speak to them about is what's vitally important for their walk and their responsibility to the Great Commission which is to go into all the world and preach the gospel, to believe that people who receive the instruction of the gospel, that they get born again, that they're baptized in water in the name of Jesus, that they become those who are filled with the Holy Spirit with evidence of speaking with other tongues, that they would cast out devils, and that they would lay hands on the sick, and the sick shall recover. You see, Jesus is informing them according to Acts chapter 1. We're going to look at verse 7. And he said unto them, It is not for you to know the times or the seasons which the Father hath put in his own power, but you shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you. And you shall be witnesses unto me both in Jerusalem and in all Judea and in Samaria and unto the uttermost part of the earth. And when he had spoken these things, while they beheld, he was taken up, and a cloud received him out of their sight. And while they looked steadfastly toward heaven as he went up, behold, two men stood by them in white apparel, which also said, Ye men of Galilee, why stand ye gazing up into heaven? This same Jesus, which is taken up from you into heaven, shall so come in like manner as you have seen him go into heaven. Then returned they unto Jerusalem from the mount called Olivet, which is from Jerusalem a Sabbath day's journey. Now let's skip over here in Acts chapter 1 to further scriptures. And let's look at verse here in verse... Uh, Verse 26, Acts chapter 1, verse 26. And they gave forth their lots, and the lot fell upon Matthias, and he was numbered with the eleven apostles. Now, Matthias was going to take the place of Judas Iscariot, who forfeited his responsibility as an apostle of the Lamb. There were twelve apostles of the Lamb. However, we see here that Matthias was selected to take his place. Acts chapter 2, verse 1. And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind, and it filled all the house where they were sitting. And there appeared unto them cloven tongues like as a fire, and it sat upon each of them. That word each is another word for all. So each one of them, the number being about 120 in the upper room, Mary, the mother of Jesus, was there also, for she was numbered with the disciples of the Lord. Verse 4. And they were all, highlight, underline the word all, filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. Notice that they spoke with tongues. And notice not a few, but all of them were filled with the Holy Spirit. All of them spoke with tongues. Not a few spoke with tongues, but all of them. How important is that? It's so important because when a person tries to ascribe something to Scripture that is not written, then they are going to be in a position to either receive correction or they're going to be going contrary to Scripture. There are those who say, well, I am a believer in Christ Jesus, but I don't speak with other tongues, and it's not necessary for me to speak with other tongues in order for me to say I'm filled with the Holy Spirit. Well, every instant 
that's, that we're looking at here in the book of Acts, we'll find that all those that were filled with the Holy Ghost began to speak with other tongues. And if it was a biblical example given unto us from the Holy Ghost, which we can read, then shouldn't you adjust your thinking to line up with what the Bible has to say? Now, the last few weeks we've been talking about the Holy Spirit. We saw that when Philip went to the city of Samaria, he preached Christ unto them, and the people were filled with the Holy Spirit as Peter and John came from Jerusalem, and he, they laid their hands on them, and the people were filled to overflowing such that this man who was observing said to Peter, I want to give you money so that whoever I lay my hands upon, they may have this same power. Or what power did he observe? He saw them speaking with other tongues. And I'm encouraging you as a person who is a believer in Christ Jesus, if you've never spoken with other tongues, I want to encourage you. If you are born of the Spirit of God, and if you ask your Heavenly Father to fill you with the Holy Spirit, you will be filled and you will be able to speak with other tongues. Speaking with other tongues is a, a sign of being filled to overflowing. Now, we've read in the past, in the book of Matthew, that out of your belly, when you are born again and when you are filled with the Holy Spirit, out of the abundance of your heart, which is in that belly region of you, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth will speak. Let's look at some more scripture. Turn to Acts chapter 10, Acts chapter 10, and we'll look at verse 44. Acts chapter 10, verse 44. And we're looking at these scriptures so that no one says, Pastor Ziegler, you're coming up with the isolated scripture to talk about being filled with the Holy Spirit. I'm born again. I sincerely love the Lord, but I don't speak with tongues. I don't think it's necessary. Well, that's interesting. How is it that you would think that your experience with God would be okay if you don't have what the full experience of the Bible says? Wouldn't you want what the Bible says you should have? I'm not saying that you're not born again because you don't speak with other tongues. I'm explaining to you that you're being born again is by the ability of the Holy Ghost. Now it's time for you to accept this wonderful promise of the Father, this gift that Jesus said everyone who believes on him should receive. Again, everyone who believes on him should receive. Why wouldn't you say, all right, Lord, if you want me to have, then I will receive. Acts chapter 10, verse 44. Let's look here. Acts chapter 10, verse 44. While Peter yet spake these words, the Holy Ghost fell on all them which heard the word. And they of the circumcision which believed were astonished as many as came with Peter, because that on the Gentiles also was poured out the gift of the Holy Ghost. Now, I'd like for you to circle to highlight the words gift of the Holy Ghost. The Holy Spirit infilling is a gift to all of those who believe. And therefore, you don't have to try to work really hard to become filled with the Holy Ghost. I am reading Acts chapter 10, verse 45, and now verse 46. For they heard them speak with tongues. And magnify God. Then answered Peter, Can any man forbid water that these should not be baptized, which have received the Holy Ghost as well as we? Now, what do you mean, as well as we? He's talking about Acts chapter 2, when they were in the upper room, and Peter was filled with the Holy Spirit, and they spake with tongues and magnified God. Peter said, Who can discount what has happened to these that were in Cornelius' household. He was a, a Roman centurion. He was a Gentile. He was a man that heard the gospel that Jesus Christ is Lord and Savior, the resurrected Lord. And him, Cornelius, and all of those that were in the house 
heard the good news of Jesus Christ being the resurrected Lord. They believed on Jesus and they confessed Jesus as Lord and Savior. And then as they were listening to Peter, they got filled with the Holy Spirit. How do you know? For they heard them all speak with tongues and magnify God. Now, Peter witnessed what was taking place. He didn't even lay hands upon them. He was just preaching, according to Acts chapter 10, verse 38, how that God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power, who went about doing good and healing all those that were oppressed of the devil, for God was with him. You see, they could receive the infilling of the Holy Ghost after they received Jesus, who was raised from the dead, who walked and did the will of the Father in healing and delivering people from satanic oppression. They received Jesus and they were filled with the Holy Spirit. And notice, and they were all filled and they all spake with tongues and magnified God. We're looking at Acts chapter 10, verse 45. Let's look at it again. And they of the circumcision which were uh, which believed were astonished as many as came with Peter because that on the Gentiles also was poured out the gift of the Holy Ghost for they heard them speak with tongues and magnify God then answered Peter can any man forbid water that these should not be baptized which means now that they have heard the gospel that Jesus is Lord, believed in their heart and received Jesus as Lord and Savior, and now that they're filled with the Holy Ghost and they're speaking with other tongues, Peter said, I, they do qualify. They do qualify for water baptism that Jesus said all believers should have taken place. That means all believers should have water baptism to express outwardly what has happened inwardly, that the believer who calls upon the name of Jesus, they are able to witness to those who are watching that their life now is hidden with God in Christ Jesus and their life is to be lived by the ability of the resurrection power of God. They are identifying with Christ. The old man has died and the new man in Christ Jesus is alive. Therefore, notice they got filled with the Holy Spirit before they were baptized with water. I know that really sometimes upsets people to hear that because they think you can only be saved if you're baptized with water. But that's not the case. You can be saved when you're baptized by the Holy Spirit into the body of Christ. The sinner making a confession of faith in Jesus Christ is immersed into the body of Christ and they become born again. Then based upon them being born again or also identified as a believer, they could receive the infilling of the Holy Spirit. And they did. They did it as Peter was preaching the good news. And I love that the people heard enough about the Holy Ghost that they could say, well, since we believe on Jesus, let's receive the Holy Ghost too. That walked with Jesus or that was on Jesus, allowing him to do the work of the Father. And they were filled with the Holy Ghost. We're looking at Acts chapter 10 and verse 45. And they of the circumcision which believed were astonished as many as came with Peter because that on the Gentiles also was poured out the gift of the Holy Ghost. So that meant the people who were with Peter that were born again, that were filled with the Holy Ghost, they were amazed to see that these Gentiles could be born again and also be filled with the Holy Ghost with the same Holy Ghost that filled them in Acts chapter 2. Now, as we read verse 7, verse 47 of Acts chapter 10, can any man forbid water that these should not be baptized which have received the Holy Ghost as well as we? In other words, they qualify for water baptism in Jesus' name because they've already received the, the sign that they're born again and filled with the Holy Ghost. 
because a non-believer cannot be filled with the Holy Ghost because this is a gift from the Father to those that believe on Christ Jesus. Now, we do know this. Peter was concerned because when he came back to Jerusalem, he would be questioned about his going into the Gentiles' house and eating with them and spending time with them because they were of the impression that Gentiles were still not capable of receiving salvation nor the wonderful gift of the Father that was promised to those who believe on Jesus, the gift of being filled with the Holy Ghost, speaking with other tongues. Now, Peter, when he goes back to Jerusalem and he had his three compadres with him, his three brethren that were with him, it's interesting to note that Peter, or oh, not three that were with him, he had six that were with him, but there was three people that came from Cornelius' house when they brought Peter to Cornelius' house. Now, we're going to see how big this was about being filled with the Holy Spirit. Acts chapter 11, verse 1. I'll read. And the apostles and brethren that were in Judea heard that the Gentiles had also received the word of God. Now, we remember, Jesus is also called the word of God. And when Peter was come up to Jerusalem, they that were of the circumcision contended with him. Now, contended meant that they were upset with Peter. Isn't it interesting that they were religiously upset with Peter because he was breaking a tradition that the Jews kept, which was that the Gentiles were considered unclean and unable to receive the revelation and the eternal life that was given to those who believe on Christ? And this is taking place approximately 11 years after Jesus had spoken unto them in Acts chapter 1. In Acts chapter 1, <clears throat> there, that's 11 years ago, or approximately a little over 10 years ago. Why is it that the Jews were having a hard time believing that Gentiles can believe and receive eternal life in Christ Jesus? Sometimes people get stuck in a tradition, and their tradition does not allow them to receive the fullness of what God has said until an experience takes place that even shocked Peter and those that were with him, and he goes back to Jerusalem to let them know, to give an account as to why he spent time with the Gentiles. Notice in verse 3, saying, Thou wentest into men uncircumcised, and didst eat with them? But Peter rehearsed the matter from the beginning and expounded it by order unto them, saying, I was in the city of Joppa praying, and in a trance I saw a vision. A certain vessel descended as it had been a great sheet let down from heaven by four corners, and it came even to me. Upon the which, when I had fastened my eyes, I considered and saw four-footed beasts of the earth, and wild beasts, and creeping things, and fowls of the air. And I heard a voice saying unto me, Arise, Peter, slay, and eat. Verse 8, Acts chapter 11, verse 8 now. But I said, Not so, Lord. For nothing common or unclean hath at any time entered into my mouth. But the voice answered me again from heaven, What God hath cleansed, that call not thou common. In other words, Peter was getting a lesson on how not to be prejudiced. He was getting a lesson on not being hypocritical. He was getting a lesson on when God has cleansed and made available for all people to receive salvation and for all people to be filled with the Holy Ghost. Don't you allow your tradition to stand in the way and keep you from being an effective witness for Christ and to fellowship with all who believe on the Lord. You see, Peter was getting a lesson from God the Father that upset his religiosity. Looking now at Acts chapter 11, verse 8 again. And I'd like for you to highlight these scriptures because there are people that won't even fellowship with other believers that attend a different church that has a different name on it. Now, the name of the top of the church may be a denominational name.
It may be Catholic. It may be Baptist. It may be Lutheran. It may be Episcopalian. It may be a name that you're not normally fellowshipping with those people. They may be Seventh-day Adventists. They may be people that may be Nazarene. But the point being is, all who believe on the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, every believer is entitled to fellowship with another believer around the word of God. For Jesus is Lord. Now, Peter was a believer. The other disciples that were in Jerusalem, they were believers. They just have happened to have come from the Jewish background. But they were believers in Jesus. Now, as believers in Jesus, they did not believe that other people outside of, Je of the Jewish background could receive Jesus as Lord and Savior. But the evidence that they had received, these Gentiles had received Jesus, was that they spoke with other tongues because they were filled with the Holy Ghost and had the exact same experience that took place in Acts chapter 2, which is approximately a year to two after Jesus Christ's resurrection and ascension. Ten years approximately pass from Acts chapter 1 and 2 to Acts chapter 11. Ten years. I tell you, traditions of men can stop the, the importance and the power of the Word of God from working in people's lives. They were given the Great Commission ten years ago to go into all the world and preach the gospel. For those that believe in the name of Jesus would have these experience according to Mark chapter 16 and Matthew 27 and 28. However, 10 years had passed, and when God revealed them to Peter, Peter, what I've cleansed, do not call common or unclean. That's the reason why we should stay focused on the scriptures. Because when we talk about the Holy Spirit, he's not asking you what your denominational background is. He's not asking you about the name on your church. He's asking you about your heart condition. If you've received Jesus as your Lord and Savior, then you qualify to be filled with the Holy Spirit, with the evidence of speaking with other tongues. In fact, you are told by the Lord Jesus Christ from the scriptures in John's gospel, chapter 7, verses 37 through 39, that those who believe on him should receive the infilling of the Holy Spirit. Let's continue looking now at Acts chapter 11, verse 8. Peter's given an account to his Jewish brethren that are born again and filled with the Holy Spirit that do speak with other tongues. But I said, not so, Lord, for nothing common or unclean hath at any time entered into my mouth. But the voice answered me again from heaven, what God hath cleansed, that call not thou common. And this was done three times, and all were drawn up again into heaven. And behold, immediately there were three men already come unto the house where I was, sent from Caesarea unto me. And the Spirit bade me, that meant required me, go with them, nothing doubting. Moreover, these six brethren accompanied me, and we entered into the man's house. And he showed us how he had seen an angel in his house, which stood and said unto him, Send men to Joppa, and call for Simon, whose surname is Peter, who shall tell thee words whereby thou and all thy house shall be saved. And as I began to speak, the Holy Ghost fell on them as on us at the beginning. Peter is acknowledging, man, this experience was not anything I tried to talk them into. This experience happened because they received what was being spoken. And anyone who believes on the word of God is going to receive results. I'll say that again. Mark it down. Don't let it slip from you. Make sure you remember this. Anyone who receives from the word of God, anyone who believes the word of God, anyone who accepts the word of God and claims the promise of God for themselves will receive results. Verse 15. And as I began to speak, the Holy Ghost fell on them as 
on us at the beginning. Then remembered I the word of the Lord, how that he said, John indeed baptized with water, but you shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost for as much then as God gave them the like gift, highlight the word gift, the like gift as he did unto us who believed on the Lord Jesus Christ. What was I that I could withstand God? Peter was saying, now look, everybody, I know you're calling me in question about my going into the Gentiles house and preaching the gospel unto them and eating with them and talking to them about the Lord. But who am I that I could stop God's power from coming upon those who have a Gentile background, but yet they believed just like we believed and they received just like we received the infilling of the Holy Ghost. How do you know they received the infilling of the Holy Ghost? When they heard them speak with tongues. Speaking with other tongues is a blessing. Now we do know that the Apostle Paul had something that happened to him. Since we're there in Acts chapter 11, turn to the previous chapter, Acts chapter 10. In Acts chapter 10, we're going to look at um, this scripture here, Acts chapter 10. And we'll see here that Peter, he himself, uh, let's see, gives another account. Acts chapter 10, verse 24. Let's see. And on the morrow after they were, in, after they were entered into Caesarea and Cornelius waited for them, and had called together his kinsmen and near friends. And as Peter was coming in, Cornelius met him and fell down at his feet and worshiped him. But Peter took him up, saying, Stand up, I myself also am a man. And as he talked with him, he went in and found many that were come together. And he said unto them, Ye know how that it is an unlawful thing for me, a man that is a Jew, to keep company or come unto one of another nation. But God hath showed me that I, shall, I should not call any man common or unclean. Now notice, this ends all of the issues about people saying, my color of the skin matters. Look, with God, everybody's color of their skin, because everybody matters, because everybody who is given life by God matters to God. There should not be any prejudice in the body of Christ. And all who believe on the Lord Jesus Christ have a right to receive the infilling of the Holy Spirit. I don't like when I hear Christians talk about, well, these people of a different color, they are not to be talked with and they are not to be fellowshiped with because after all, they are considered to be less than righteous, less than hold with God. I have news for you. Who are you that you could withstand God? Who are you that would go contrary to the word of God? Everyone who believes on the Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, is worthy. Everyone who believes on the Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, is a candidate to be filled with the Holy Ghost, with the evidence of speaking with other tongues. Peter got the message real clear. And Peter said in verse 28, and he said unto them, you know how that it is an unlawful thing for a man that is a Jew to keep company or to come into one of another nation. But God has showed me that I should not call any man common or unclean. Therefore came I unto you without gainsaying. As soon as I was sent for, I asked therefore, what intent have you sent for me? And Cornelius said, four days ago, as I was fasting until this hour, and at the ninth hour, I prayed in my house, and behold, a man stood before me in bright clothing, and said, Cornelius, thy prayer is heard, and thine alms are had in remembrance in the sight of God. Send therefore to Joppa, and call hither. Simon, whose surname is Peter. He is lodged in the house of one Simon a tanner by the seaside, who when he cometh shall speak unto thee. Immediately therefore I sent to tell, I sent to thee, and thou hast well done that thou art come. 
Now, therefore, we are all here present before God to hear all these things that are commanded thee of God. Then Peter opened his mouth and said, Of a truth I perceive that God is no respecter of persons, but in every nation, in every nation, I like that, underline that, in every nation, he that feareth him and worketh righteousness is accepted with him. The word which God sent unto the children of Israel, preaching peace by Jesus Christ, he is Lord of all. The word I say, you know, which was published throughout all Judea and began from Galilee after the baptism which John preached. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power, who went about doing good and healing all that were oppressed of the devil, for God was with him. And we are witnesses of all things which he did, both in the land of the Jews and in Jerusalem, whom they slew and hanged on a tree. Him God raised up the third day and showed him openly, not only to the people, but unto witnesses chosen before of God, even to us who did eat and drink with him after he arose from the dead. And he commanded us to preach unto the people and to testify that it is he which was ordained of God to be the judge of the quick, the word quick means living and dead. To him give all the prophets witness that through his name, whosoever believeth in him shall receive remission of sins. Whosoever believeth in him shall receive remission of sins. That means nobody should be running around as a believer trying to make amends for the sins of their forefathers. They should be saying, I'm going to live as I'm required to live as a believer in Christ Jesus. I'm going to love. I'm going to walk by faith and not by sight. And I'm going to let the Holy Spirit guide me and direct me. Why? Because he is the spirit of truth. He is the third person of the Godhead. He is God, the Holy Ghost. Let's turn, take another look at some more scripture. Turn over to Acts chapter 9. Let's backtrack a little bit more. Acts chapter 9, approximately nine years after the resurrection of Jesus. Here we're going to see how that the Apostle Paul had an experience. Acts chapter 9, verse 1. And Saul, yet breathing out threatenings and slaughter against the disciples of the Lord, went into the high priest and desired of him letters to Damascus and to the synagogues, that if any found, <clears throat> that if he found any of this way, whether they were men or women, he might bring them bound unto Jerusalem. And as he journeyed, he came near Damascus, and suddenly there shined round about him a light from heaven, and he fell on the earth and heard a voice saying unto him, Saul, Saul, why persecutest thou me? And he said, Who art thou, Lord? And he said, I am Jesus, whom thou persecutest. It is hard for thee to kick against the pricks. And he trembling and astonished said, Lord, what wilt thou have me to do? And he said, and the Lord said unto him, arise and go into the city and it shall be told thee what thou must do. And the men which journeyed with him stood speechless, hearing a voice and seeing no man. And Saul arose from the earth and when his and when his eyes were opened, he saw no man. But they led him by the hand and brought him into Damascus. And he was three days without sight and neither did eat nor drink. And there was a certain disciple again. Certain disciple, not a, not a ministry gift, not an apostle, not a prophet, not an evangelist, not a pastor, not a teacher, but just a disciple of the Lord. And there was a certain disciple at Damascus named Ananias. And to him said the Lord in a vision, Ananias. And he said, Behold, I am here, Lord. And the Lord said unto him, Arise and go into the street which is called Straight, and inquire in the house of Judas for one called Saul of Tarsus, for behold, he prayeth, and hath seen in the vision a man named Ananias coming in and putting his hand on him that he might receive his sight. Then Ananias answered, Lord, I have heard by many of this man how much evil he hath done to thy saints at Jerusalem. And here he hath authority from the chief priests to bind all that call on thy name. But the Lord said unto him, Go thy way. 
He is a chosen vessel unto me to bear my name before the Gentiles and kings and the children of Israel. For I will show him how great things he must suffer for my name's sake. And Ananias went his way and entered into the house and putting his hands on him said, Brother Saul. That meant Saul must have been born again now. Huh. Brother Saul, the Lord even Jesus that appeared unto thee in the way as thou camest, have sent me that thou mightest receive thy sight. Now he's already born again, but now Paul needs to receive his sight. Paul is also called Saul. That thou mightest receive thy sight. Acts chapter 9, verse 17. That thou mightest receive thy sight and, notice this, and be filled with the Holy Ghost. Now I thought he's a believer. He is a believer, but he wasn't yet filled with the Holy Ghost. And we see that Ananias said, Saul, the Jesus whom you saw in the vision and you saw him telling you that I would come and see you. I'm going to lay my hands on you so that you might receive your sight and be filled with the Holy Ghost. Somebody says, well, it doesn't say he spoke with other tongues. Well, let's take a look at the scripture and see. Uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 14. In 1 Corinthians, the 14th chapter, let's look at verse 18. 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verse 18. The Apostle Paul is writing and he says, I thank my God, I speak with tongues more than you all. <laughs> I think he got filled with the Holy Ghost speaking with other tongues. And I've got to quit because I've run out of time. But oh, we're still talking about the Holy Spirit. And the infilling of the Holy Spirit is absolutely important for believers all over the world who believe on Jesus to receive. Salvation is the free gift that the Lord offers anyone who would believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. The Bible says in Romans 10, 9 and 10 that with our hearts we believe unto righteousness and with our mouth confession is made unto salvation. I trust that you will believe God's word, that your faith will be in the risen Savior who came to give his life for you. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever would believe in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Will you pray with me this prayer of salvation? It's not difficult. It's very easy, but you must mean it from your heart. So repeat these words after me. Jesus, I confess you as my Savior and my Lord. I believe in my heart that God raised you from the dead. With my mouth, I confess you and I receive you as my Savior. Jesus, thank you for making my heart your home. Thank you for living in me. God the Father is now my Father, and the Holy Spirit has done a work in me. I am a new creature in Christ Jesus, my Lord. Thank you, Lord, for saving me, and thank you for guiding my life. In Jesus' name, amen. We're here to be a blessing to you at Spiritful Christian Center. The way this broadcast is brought to you is by people's faithful sowing and reaping as a result of God's word being given unto them. So I want to encourage you, be a part of this ministry of sowing and reaping. The Bible says, whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. In this ministry, we believe that man must hear the word of God. For man does not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. The Bible declares, God is able to make all grace abound toward you, that you always have all sufficiency in all things, may abound to every good work. God loves a cheerful and hilarious giver. I encourage you, be a part of this ministry. Be hilarious in your giving and watch the Lord bring it back to you in many, many ways. In Jesus' name. You have been watching the Spirit Food Christian Center worldwide webcast online at www.myspiritfood.com. Join us for worship service each Sunday at 9.30 a.m. And be sure to check out our website for our weekly live broadcast and much, much more. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good.